Chapter 19. That's more like it, Amos exclaimed the next morning, staring down at the row of dead rats. Behind the rats sat the sheriff and the larger deputy, like two proud fishermen displaying their latest catch. Rats on my boat got a big problem now. Amos nudged one with his toe, as if he couldn't believe it was dead. Then he bent down and stroked Sophia's head. Good kitty. I make a super choice when I catch you, champion rat biter. He chucked Sophia under her chin, which started her purring. She rubbed her side against his leg. And you, pig, he turned to Flora. How did you get off your chain? Flora stiffened. No, no, no. No pigs walking around. You stay put. You get fat. That's your job. Amos walked over to Flora's chain and stooped to examine the collar. Flora and Sophia followed. Bad piggy, he muttered to himself. After filling, filling her bowl with pig slops, Amos reached into his pocket and brought out a length of rope. Looping the rope around Flora's neck, he crafted a collar and clipped it to the chain. Then he tossed the old leather collar away. Gathering the dead rats by their tails, he climbed the stairs. Sophia raised her head high. That, that is one impressed cook, she sniffed Flora's slops and turned up her nose. Don't think I'll need to choke down pig food from now on. I have a feeling Sophia is in line for a special treat. Watch this. Flora looked at Sophia. Then she looked at her bowl of food that she had worked so hard to protect. Suddenly she didn't feel very hungry. The door swung open again. This time, Amos carried down a plate of greasy fish and set it in front of the cat. Good kitty, he petted Sophia on the head. Strong kitty, queen kitty, I gotta tell the captain about you. When he was gone, Sophia inspected her plate and took a dainty nibble. Heavenly, she said. Feels good to get real food delivered right to your feet. Flora watched Sophia take another bite. Do you think you can chew through this rope? Hmm. Sophia swallowed and licked her lips. Could be a problem. Cats don't really chew on ropes. Still, it'll be okay. The rats come to us, remember? Flora wasn't comforted. Let's eat, said her friend. We're going to need our strength. They'll be back. Sophia was right. The rats weren't ready to give up. Or maybe, Flora thought, they let their stomachs do their thinking for them. The first one dashed in on Flora's bowl as Sophia finished her fish. This time, Flora didn't hesitate to fire off kicks, but it was awkward working at the end of the chain, and she didn't feel the same joy inside either. Still, the rat extermination team worked their magic over the next few meals, but each day they killed fewer and fewer. The vermin would run off, clicking their teeth and screeching in frustration. Then it happened. The rats stopped coming. It would have been comforting to think all of them had been killed, but the sounds of clicks and hisses and chewing remained. Either they'd learned their lesson, Flora thought, or more likely, the two friends had killed off the stupid rats and only the wise and cunning ones were left. Amos was disturbed when he came down one morning. Big problem, he boomed. He placed the pig slops on the floor and leaned over Sophia. Lots of alive rats upstairs in my kitchen again. No more dead rats down here where they come from. What's the problem, cat? Sophia rubbed herself against his legs, but there wasn't a plate of fish in his hands today. Then she made the mistake of picking out some choice morsels from Flora's slops. No! Amos stomped his foot inches from her tail, making Sophia jump back and hiss. No more free food for you. You gotta be hungry. Your job is killing rats. No dead rats, no food. Amos stayed close while Flora ate her fill. He looked into the shadows from time to time, and when he heard the scurrying of little bodies, he shook his head. Flora was careful to leave a few bites for her friend, but as soon as she stopped eating, Amos picked up her bowl. No pig food for cats. Sophia rubbed herself, hopefully, on his legs a second time, but he tossed her off. Do your job, he shouted, and stomped up the stairs. That was rude, Sophia said, and she began to give herself a thorough tongue bath, as if not knowing where her next meal might come from didn't disturb her. Very rude, said Flora. But it's true, Sophia paused in her licking. I have to do my job better. How? asked Flora. Sophia finished her cleaning with a flourish. Hunt them, then kill them. But how are you going to kill them without me? Flora pulled against her chain. The rope collar dug into her neck. Ha! Sophia doesn't need help. I only needed to get started. I have my killer instinct back. Cat attack. Rat hunting is what cats were made for. Flora slumped down on her chain. Catch you later, pig. Don't run off too far. Sophia nudged Flora on the shoulder. Just kidding. 
I'll stop by and say hi if I get a chance between kills or when I need a break from hunting. Good luck, Flora sighed, and then forced a smile, watching until the little flag of Sophia's tail disappeared into the darkness. She felt more useless than ever. Chapter 20 For the next few hours, Flora listened to the sounds of the sheriff killing rats. During the silences, she imagined Sophia licking her paw for a moment before going after her next victim. Good for you, Flora whispered. She tried to get comfortable and let her mind wander to her real job, the one the captain would give her once they got to their destination. She laid her head down, and a snowy scene filled her mind. There were no trees, no grass, no stones. There were no creatures, only whiteness. Then over the snow came a sled team with a pig at the lead. A blizzard roared down out of nowhere until the dogs couldn't see ten feet ahead of them. Their leader didn't need to see. She knew the way by heart. She was unstoppable. Don't you give up on me, she shouted to the dogs behind her. She knew they were exhausted. Remember this, a sled team is tough. A sled team is strong. We don't give up, and we are a little bit crazy. Flora gave a hop and a wiggle to show her boys how unafraid she was, and then she pulled with all her might. The sled surged forward. Flora slept and dreamed until a new sound woke her up. It was a cross between a moan and a meow. Sophia, the cat queen, meowed near Flora's ear. I can't do it. She looked terrible. One of her ears was bloody. A patch of fur was missing from her shoulder. I'm a failure, she moaned. Nothing but a hairball, worthless. What happened? Flora sat up. How many rats did you kill? Zero, Sophia wailed. They ganged up on me. Flora couldn't help feeling a tiny quiver of satisfaction. I wish I could help. I shouldn't need help. Sophia threw herself down on the boards. Cats are supposed to be independent. Flora tried not to look happy. You need a team. Sophia licked her paw mournfully and then looked up. I do not. I'm a loner. Flora shook her head to make the chain rattle. Um, maybe you could take a crack at this rope ahead of my neck, after all? Sophia studied it doubtfully. Then she began to gnaw at the rope. After a few minutes, she gave a very uncat-like squeak. Did you get it? asked Flora. Nope, Sophia moaned. I think I broke a tooth. Just then, something heavy thudded at the top of the stairs, and the door opened with a bang. Now I'm going to teach you a lesson for good. Amos came into view. In one hand, he held Flora's slops. He had a stick under his arm. With his other hand, he dragged a lump that thumped down each step. At the bottom, Amos dropped the lump in a heap. You got a new job. He gave a heap of kick. I caught you stealing food like a rat. Now you catch rats or you don't eat here. Amos threw down the stick. Bang their heads with this. Lantern and matches are on the stairs. I wouldn't have to steal if you fed me enough. The heap lifted its head. Elric? Amos put the bowl of pig food down and turned back to the boy. You and that lazy cat had better kill rats every day or you don't eat at all anymore. Amos grabbed the bowl when Flora was finished. Only the pig eats for free. He stomped to the top of the stairs and slammed the door. Flora flinched. She knew she needed her strength. Still, she hadn't felt good about digging into a bowl full of food while Sophia and Elric stood by hungry. Elric picked up the stick and pounded on the stairs. I won't be treated like a prisoner. No answer came from the top. He's in worse shape than I am, whispered Sophia. If cats were the compassionate sort, I would feel sorry for him. The boy sat on the stairs and put his head on his knees. Flora and Sophia waited and watched. When they got tired of waiting, they curled up together and fell asleep. Flora woke in the night from Sophia tapping on her nose. Flora sat up. What's wrong? Shh. Watch this. Sophia was looking toward a flicker of light moving about in the shadows. He's hunting. Sometimes the light would race one way or another, and sometimes the boy's stick could be heard banging against the floor or the walls of the ship. He doesn't know what he's doing, whispered Sophia. You can't hunt rats with a lantern. They'll run and hide. It was true. Flora could hear rats at the opposite end of the hold scuffling around in the dark, but the boy didn't seem to hear a thing. The next morning, Amos tromped down with a bowl of food and a scowl on his face. He glared at Elric, who lifted his head from the bottom of the stairs where he had spent the night. He kicked at Sophia who scuttled out of reach of his big boots, but he didn't say a word. 
Flora could smell the delicious mixture even before the bowl was set in front of her. The leftovers were still warm. She was hungry as usual, but she wouldn't eat while her companions had nothing. So she stayed where she was and watched Amos's face. Piggy, he shouted. The food smells made Flora's stomach growl and quiver. Now everything's wrong on this boat, Amos hollered. Rats and thieves eat the food upstairs. The pig doesn't eat food downstairs. I'll never be a cook on a boat again. As he grabbed the bowl away, a great splash of gravy and food slopped onto the floor. Amos paid no attention. Marching up the stairs, he glared at Elric again. You kill 20 rats, I give you another chance. As soon as the door closed, Flora followed her nose to the spot where the food had spilled. Sophia was already sniffing the edges. When Flora heard clicking, she whispered, Sophia, stand clear. It sounds like the rats are ready to try again. Sophia slinked out of sight. A crowd of whiskers and beady eyes appeared in the dim light. Noses twitched as the rats drew closer to the delicious smell. Flora eased herself into position, ready to bring the hammer down on her rat head. Unfortunately, these were the smart ones. They warily stayed at the edges of the shadows. After a while, Flora slumped down and pretended to be asleep. She made little snoring no noises and watched out of the slits of her eyes. A trio of rats came out of the shadows and began licking the gravy. Flora trembled with excitement, but she waited. Two more rats joined. Flora jumped to her feet and spun around. Pow! She let loose and felt her hooves connect with a pair of heads. Slam! She lashed out again. Sophia flashed from one twitching body to another. Then Flora and Sophia stood back and looked at their handiwork three more. Wow! Flora turned to Alaric. He had lit the lantern again. Now he stood gazing at them and the rats. You guys are amazing. What a team. He reached out and scratched between Flora's ears. It felt heavenly. Sophia didn't even bother, bother to say anything about the cats and teams. Instead, she rubbed Alaric's leg. Three rats, Alaric stood up. It's a good start. He reached down again, and Flora thought he was going to give her head another scratch, but instead, she felt his fingers working at the rope around her neck and felt the weight of the chain disappear. Come on, team. Alaric lifted his lantern to show the way. Let's get to work.